Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve Sudoku finned swordfish. In my first example, I'll give you the definition, how to spot them and to make eliminations, and all the other rules that you need to know about finned swordfish. In my second example, I'll show you a way to bypass the finned swordfish strategy with a somewhat easier strategy, but there is a catch. Click below for puzzle and video links, and with that, it's solving time. Okay, our first example is from the top of your website. If you Googled Finn Swordfish, uh, this website will pop up in one of the top five searches, and this is the example from it. I already filled in all the cells to get you to where they are in the example. It's important to know that you got this 2 9 8 pair in block one, and here in column one, that eliminates places where some of the cannons can be. And then you also have this pointing pair of twos going down column seven okay so when you are doing sudoku solving and you get to the point where all the basic techniques run out so in this case we can't do any more uh you know naked hidden pairs singles pointing pairs then you want to start looking for single candidate strategies all right and a swordfish is a type of single candidate strategy so let's look at where the eights can be in this puzzle look on the eights they can be here they can be here. They can be here. They can't be where the naked pairs are. There and here. Okay. Color that. Now, if this cell right here had another digit in it, and just for to make this a little easier, let's put a 2 right there. Okay. Let's say that that was... We had a two right there. Then you, what you would see is in rows two, rows three, and row seven, the eights will be limited to the same three columns. The limited columns three, four, and seven. Okay, and you notice there's only you know two eights in row three. It'd be only two eights in row seven. That's still okay. Well, a swordfish can be two or three. When the cells are limited, the same in the same three rows are limited to two or three columns. That is a swordfish. And what it means is that you can have no other eight in that column. So this cell right here cannot contain an eight. This cell would not be able to contain an eight. If you put an eight right here, you end up running out of restrictions of where you could put the eights in those rows. Okay, that's a swordfish. It's very powerful because you can get rid of all of the additional candidates in what we call these cover sets. All right, where the where the swordfish rows are, those are base sets. Now, in this situation, we do have an extra digit right there. Okay, we have an extra digit right there. So a swordfish strategy doesn't quite apply. However, you know we can still color our cells and there is still something we can do about this situation all right what i just showed you is if this cell right here was not an eight you'd have a swordfish right and so you can eliminate those two cells as an eight if this was true there is a cell you could still eliminate it'd be that one right there so if this was an eight you can eliminate that as an eight if this was not an eight, the pink cell is not an eight, then you'd have a swordfish, and this cell right here would not be an eight. And I'll put that in red. Okay, so this is called a finned swordfish. So whenever you have a situation with a swordfish plus one to two more cells in one of the blocks in the same base set, so it's got to be. You know, rows two, three, and seven are where the swordfish candidates are. You have one more in row seven in the same block as one of the swordfish cells. Then you have a thin swordfish. You can actually have one or two cells. If the five wasn't there and both those could possibly be an eight, it doesn't matter. You can have two fins or one, but they got to be in the same row as where these swordfish are. When that's the case, you can eliminate any of that candidate that is in the same block in the same column as the swordfish 
So this is the cover set, like I said. So you can eliminate an eight from right here. If there's nothing right there, you could also eliminate an eight from right there. And you're like, okay, Timberlake, that seems a little confusing. Can you help explain? And I sure can. And by the way, if you are new to the channel, I welcome you to Smart Hobbies. Subscribe if you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. If you put an eight right here, then you would eliminate the possibility for the eight in all of these orange cells, all these blue cells, right? None of those could be an eight anymore. And so we get rid of that. Force is an eight right here, which means we can get rid of an eight right there. And then what you notice now is in row two and three, you have to put an eight in the same column. The only place remain to put an eight in row two and three would be in column four, right? You could put an eight there, but you can't put another eight right there. So we run out places to put the eights. That's why we can eliminate this cell. All right, so once we see that, we can eliminate that cell. And so I'll get rid of that color. And that's how the fin swordfish works. You may be able to improve your Sudoku skills faster than you think. Click on the pinned comment to join the Smarty Party. I'll send you exclusive monthly puzzle packs featuring strategies like swordfish and other exclusive content to give you more ways to solve hard Sudoku. And you want to solve hard Sudoku, right? Now see if you can solve the rest of the puzzle. You do need some more advanced strategies. Give me a thumbs up if you are able to do it. And let me know in the comments what strategy you use to do it. I'd love to hear from you. Now let's move on to the next puzzle in that bypass I was telling you about. Okay, for our second example, this is from Cracking the Cryptic. Back in 2018, Simon Anthony did a solve of a diabolical puzzle from the UK Telegraph. He said, after basic techniques are done, you get to this position. So let's look at where the sevens can be, okay? So we can see that a seven can go there, they can go here, they can go here, and go here, and they can go here. All right. We got all the spots where a seven can be. Now, what Simon didn't talk about was that there's a bypass. There's another way to make an elimination here that doesn't require a fin swordfish. He shows a fin swordfish, and I will get to that. Here's the cute bypass, but there's going to be a catch, and I'll show you that here in just a second. You can use a little bit of coloring. And so if we use some coloring and go, all right, let's do some purple and some yellow here. Yellow, and then this would be purple, and this would be purple. And then these two would be yellow, and this would be purple, and this would be yellow. And we'll get rid of all the extra blue so that you can see what I'm talking about. All right, if we did some simple coloring here and said, uh, Hey, you know, this cell could be a seven, right? The purple rubber, it's a seven. If this is a seven, then this would have to be a seven. That would have to be a seven, and that would have to be a seven, right? If this is not a seven, then this yellow has to be a seven, right? This would be a seven. That'd be a seven. That'd be a seven, or that'd be a seven. So in both situations, whether this is a seven here or this is, you can see that you have a purple and yellow cell that both look at this cell. And when you have that situation, this cell cannot contain a seven. And so you'd be able to eliminate a seven from right there. You create a pointing pair of sevens here and you better eliminate a seven from right there. This is simple coloring. And I talk more about it in this tutorial. Some of you like simple coloring and that's pretty cool. And this would cause these two eliminations, which is similar to what we'll eliminate using the fin swordfish. However, there is a catch. The catch is it only works when you have these conjugate pairs. So you have the swordfish that have two candidates in the rows or the columns. And so it's either this one or this one. If you have a full up swordfish or fin swordfish where there's three candidates, you know, you have three sevens across here three sevens across here, three sevens across there. You can't use these conjugate pairs that you can use for coloring. And so it may not work. That's a situation where you do want to still look for a finned swordfish. So let's get rid of these colors. 
and let's get back to what Simon Anthony showed in the video. Look across row two. Want to look across row seven, and we want to look across row four. Okay, two, seven, and four. If the sevens were limited to these spots in columns three, six, and eight, we'd have a swordfish. And we'd be able to eliminate these cells, this cell, right? However, we have an additional fin here in row four. So this is a fin, right? And it's additional. Otherwise, that's, that's what prevents this from being a regular swordfish. If the fin's true, this cell right here, which is in the cover sets in column six, would not be true. It could not be a seven. If this is false, what we see is that you'd have a swordfish of sevens, and then this cell cannot contain a seven. So where the fin is true, it's not a sword, it's not a seven right there. If it's false, and then you have a swordfish. And that would have to be a seven being one of these spots. This cannot contain a seven. So we can eliminate seven from right there. And then what you end up with is a claiming pair of seven. So you can eliminate that cell from being a seven as well, just like we did with the coloring. And if you find value in what I'm showing you, please consider buying me a coffee or click on the super thanks here in YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. I included a puzzle link below so you can finish out and solve the rest of this puzzle. Let me know how you did. Now see if you can spot the fin swordfish or multicoloring opportunity in this next video. Thank you so much for watching.